The Russians claim they're avoiding civilian targets. But wherever you turn in this landscape emptied by fear, don't take their word for it. This is Chernihiv, north of the capital, and these are some of the unlucky tower blocks here. At least 22 people died in this airstrike. Closer to Kyiv is the small town of Borodenka. It's hard to see the strategic purpose of ripping a chunk out of a block of flats, except perhaps to terrorize the population and say to the capital Kyiv, this is what awaits you. As night falls, hope fades for people for whom normality is already a distant memory. On the road out, these are Russian military trucks destroyed by Ukrainians. This war is spreading like a plague across the landscape. It's impossible to know where it'll end, but we do know how it'll continue. This was today's video from the Russian Ministry of Defense, an armored column rolling towards Kyiv with a sense of grim inevitability. It was meant to cow, but it didn't work. This was the scene in the Ukrainian parliament today. Good day, everyone. This is Dad Setro, and I'm welcoming you to Setro's blog channel. And we are looking at what is presently happening in Ukraine, one of the most beautiful countries of the world that I never relate them to a place where war can suddenly just pop out like that out of the blue. So surprisingly, on the 24th day of the month of February 2022, we were so surprised that numerous bombings were just taking place right in the city center, not just along the borders of a country is supposed to be sovereign country and it is so surprising to discover that what we are watching as things that have been created by some cinematographers is happening live that the citizens of ukraine are waking up to see that their city is a place they actually call their home is being invaded and balls of fire are rolling everywhere and uh, hospitals are being burned, children are being killed, mothers are being uh, killed, uh, as in fathers are nowhere to be found, all in the name of someone trying to make a statement. I find that so, so appalling. And a lot of questions begin to pop through my mind, among which are, what can we now say about this concept of sovereignty of a nation? That is just trying to like tell us that the definition of sovereignty of a nation is not what we used to think of it before because anywhere in the world, some set of persons or some group of persons can just wake up one day and decide to fry what you call your sovereignty. And that is why I begin to look at if this can be happening to a country in the European hemisphere, like Ukraine, then what can we now talk about happening on the continent of Africa? I think it's high time the African continent began to uh, reason outside the box and begin to tell themselves the basic truth that there is actually no security anywhere in the world. And the only security you have anywhere in the world is that which you have put in place for yourself and your citizens. And now, I come to the fact to be asking myself this question. Is this how the world is just going to fold their hands and be speaking big English while the beautiful country of Ukraine is being what? Is being frozen, is being burnt up, is being reduced from epic beauty to epic nothingness. Are we going to wait and just be looking and allow what is going on there? escalate into hundreds of thousands of persons being there before we can rally around as the world to see how we can broker peace or to ensure that there is no flight zone across this beautiful land of Ukraine? Or are we just going to be buying newspaper and the news stations are just showing us uh, the, the 
D9, D8, D7, D whatever they call it, and people are getting views on the misery of a country. No, I don't think this is the time where we need to hold our hand because it's sending strange signals. It's sending wrong signals to a lot of you know mad dogs that are out there. Permit me to use this, that word. You know, there are so many mad dogs that are out there that are just looking at the whole world. Let's see how you react to Russia before they can now know what to do to the next door neighbor of theirs. That means some of these countries that are that are of the mindset that they are better than the other human beings elsewhere, or their country is better than other countries or other continents elsewhere. They are watching and they might start rising up to lay claim on surrounding countries that they feel should be part of them. Economic sanction has been imposed and a lot of grammar and other stuff, fine. But I think the world should do better than that. After all, Ukraine is in this challenge. Ukraine got into this mess just because they wanted to align with NATO. And if they wanted to align with NATO, is landing them into such a problem like this, then the question is, what is NATO doing about it? The whole world needs to put us together, make sure that this doesn't escalate further, because whatever is happening between Russia and Ukraine is going to definitely affect the rest of the world. Already, the stock market is having a challenge across the globe now. Meanwhile, Russia's stock market remains on the brink of collapse under global sanctions. The Moscow stock market was closed again today for a third day in a row, and the ruble has hit yet another low. It was already valued at less than one cent per dollar. Not just in Russia, and a lot of issues is coming up in foreign exchange, even businesses that are thriving on foreign exchanges and the like. They know that, that something is really, really happening across the globe. And as such, the world should not make it look interesting to, 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 to usurp her, to just venture into people's territory and begin to release bullets, release uh, fire arms, release uh, as they start bombing citizens of any country. Every soul are so precious, every human being are so humane that none should be esteemed better than the other. Looking at what is going on presently in Ukraine or between Ukraine and uh, Russia, the African continent, the African countries, the countries in Africa should better start thinking right because most of the time the African people are always dependent on some so-called godfatherism in uh, amid the uh, G7, so they call them. But let me tell you, this is just to tell us the possibility of help coming in at the right time to foretell a whole lot of damage might be something that you are dreaming of. There is nothing as good as peace. There is nothing as comparable as peace. There is nothing to be traded for peace. Because peace is the master plan of every engine of economic growth and development. And that is where I'm beginning to ask myself this question. If it's taking the whole of the world, if it's taking NATO this long time to see how they can come in, what are we looking at? Oh, so sorry. Before somebody comes, they will start saying, what kind of uh, presentation is this? That am I not thinking of what the other guy is saying? Let me tell you this. The mere fact that someone is threatening to advance and release nuclear weapons on the rest of the world is a signal that whoever is making such statement can still go ahead even when left to go deeply into what is presently doing in Ukraine. And at the slightest provocation, he can actually still try to carry out his threat. So why not let us look for a way to wade in into this much faster than ever? The whole world should be bigger than a single human being. 
And I don't want to believe that a single person can bring down the whole world when the whole world can easily for means of curbing the, the escalation of this matter. It is high time that the whole world begins to come together to say, oh, what is the real reason why this and this are there? Because you might be condemning a man that have more information than we do. And that's why I love to balance the equation. I'm not condemning anybody, but I am saying that anybody that is not willing to give peace a chance is just as hypocritical as whoever is causing the war in Ukraine. So I feel that people should just stand up. Countries should stand up and tell their leaders the truth. It is fair enough to blame the leader, but it's more dangerous enough that the citizens are seated while you are enjoying a cup of coffee. Some other countries are being released into rubbish. Some other countries are being exposed into fire. And you know, the possibility of any place on earth where the release of firearms gets into the large populace. Look at Libya, for example. They are here to recover. The number of arms that have been released into the hands of the citizens, they are here to recover from the men that such actually release it. Now, come to think of it, African countries are always believing that the, the, their protection is in the arms of some third party, some G7 member nation. Now you begin to see that it's time for us to be economically more independent and to also be military-wise more independent in building resourceful men that can build structures to prevent us from ethnic aggression. So this video is just simply different from the kind of videos that you've known us for. And as much as we would love to do a lot of happy things on this channel, it saddens my heart. I spent countless hours watching what is developing in uh, Ukraine and I feel the old world is trying to fill Ukrainian. The old world please rise up. When I mean the old world, I mean the president of all these countries that call themselves by whatever name they go by. It's right time that will rise up on time. We should not rise up when the whole country has been buried in rubble and we introduce another strain on the European Union because already the European Union is not as rich as they are supposed to be. They have been recording so many economic downturns in numerous European countries and as such, having this, allowing this to go a step further, no one should.